Bernie Madoff, the mastermind architect behind one of the largest Ponzi schemes in history, was responsible for massive financial fraud that resulted in the loss of thousands of people's hard-earned investments. It was a deception so great and severe that Bernie Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in prison, and today it serves as a cautionary tale of greed that not only destroyed several families around the world, but in the end also destroyed his own family, where his only two sons died in the wake of their father's arrest. In today's video, we will explore Bernie Madoff's devious financial scam, how he was able to convince people to invest in it, and the lasting effects his actions had on the economy and investors. He used Charles Ponzi's scheme and devised a strategy that was similar to Ponzi's but with a few extra steps to hide the true nature of the scam. If you want to learn more about Charles Ponzi and his infamous Ponzi scheme, which has been dubbed the scam of the century, do check out our previous video linked in the description bar below. Bernie Madoff, the man who shattered the world. Bernie Madoff was born into a middle-class Jewish family in Queens, New York City in 1938. His childhood was fairly unremarkable and filled with typical middle-class experiences. As an adult, however, Madoff was anything but typical. He became one of the most notorious figures in modern history. Madoff earned his bachelor's degree in political science from Hofstra University in 1960, and while still in college married his high school sweetheart, Ruth. After briefly attending Brooklyn Law School, he and his wife launched the investment firm Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities, LLC, in 1960. What began as a small brokerage firm in New York City would eventually blossom into one of the largest market makers on Wall Street. And over the next five decades, Madoff's firm would grow exponentially and become one of the most successful Wall Street companies. He started small, with his firm initially focusing solely on trading over-the-counter stocks. With only $5,000 that he had saved from working as a lifeguard and installing sprinklers, he began trading extremely low-priced penny stocks. His family and friends were keen to go on board as investors. Unfortunately, following the 1962 Kennedy Slide flash crash, which wiped out 20% of the market, Madoff's bets went south and his father-in-law was forced to bail him out. Despite this setback, Bernie Madoff persevered and bounced back. He was a shrewd businessman and quickly built a loyal client base, expanding the firm's activities to include new offerings such as Nasdaq, options trading, and market making. This allowed Madoff to gain an edge over the competition and attract more investors, creating a snowball effect of growth. Madoff formed personal relationships with affluent important businessmen in New York City and Palm Beach, Florida, then signed them up as investors paid them generous returns, and used their positive recommendations to attract more. It became a badge of honor to be acknowledged as a Madoff investor, as a result of the fact that not everyone was permitted to participate in his funds, and that he maintained an image of exclusivity in order to entice wealthy and serious investors. Bernie became known as an aggressive trader and soon built a reputation as a trustworthy broker and businessman, a trait that resonated strongly with clients. Madoff's business savviness enabled him to maintain a high level of trust and credibility, and he began to amass significant wealth and influence, making his firm one of Wall Street's most bankable firms. But although it seemed that Madoff had created an empire of exclusivity and trust, his was an empire that was solely built on a house of cards, an empire that was carefully constructed to lure in people and siphon off their hard-earned money. It soon became apparent that behind this wall of trust, Madoff had been running an elaborate Ponzi scheme since at least the early 1990s. As successful as he was, his scam was becoming more evident with each passing day. Even as early as 1992, concerned citizens had requested that the Securities and Exchange Commission investigate Bernard Madoff's business practices. The SEC complied with these requests on many occasions, but was unfortunately unable to uncover the massive fraud. A financial specialist by the name of Henry Markopoulos was one of the first people to call Madoff's scam out. Using simple math, he came to the conclusion that Madoff had to be lying, and in May 2000, he informed the SEC about Madoff's activities. Marco Polis stated the following in a scathing letter to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, in the year 2005. Madoff Securities is the world's largest Ponzi scheme. In this case, there is no SEC reward payment due to the whistleblower, so basically I'm turning this case in because it's the right thing to do. 
He wasn't the only one. Multiple sources warned the SEC and other authorities of Bernie Madoff's scheme, and several Wall Street firms declined to engage in business with him due to widespread mistrust of Madoff. Despite all the warnings and red flags, Bernie Madoff continued to operate his fraudulent business for years. But in December 2008, everything came crashing down when he was finally exposed and brought to justice. In 2008, when a huge number of investors decided to cash out their stakes, totaling roughly $7 billion, Madoff lacked sufficient funds to cover the requested withdrawals. According to him, he could only come up with a few hundred million at the time, and soon it became evident that Bernie Madoff had been running the largest and most elaborate Ponzi scheme in history a scheme made popular in the 1920s by con artist Charles Ponzi. The Ponzi scheme is essentially a deception in which previous investors were rewarded with funds donated by newer investors, and Bernie Madoff had done just that throughout his career. He managed to keep his fraudulent activity running smoothly for a prolonged period of time by presenting his investors with fake account statements and promising high returns while paying out existing investors with their own money. He merely deposited their funds in an account at Chase Manhattan Bank, which merged to form J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. in 2000, and then left them alone. According to one estimate, the bank may have gained up to $435 million in after-tax profit from those deposits. However, it is important to note that the bank was not complicit in Madoff's scheme. When clients wanted to redeem their investments, Madoff simply paid the payouts with new funds, which he drew by cultivating his victims' trust and winning their faith. His deception entrailed thousands of investors from all over the world. His frauds impacted banks, hedge funds, universities, and many foundations. By the end of it, he had conned thousands of investors out of over a staggering $65 billion. The Securities and Exchange Commission eventually found evidence against him, but the nail in the coffin that sealed his fate in 2008 was when he confessed to his sons, Mark and Andrew, of his doings, and they realized the gravity of their father's crime and alerted authorities, and even provided evidence against him. And so began a long saga of investigations, court hearings, and incarceration, which ultimately led to his arrest and a 150-year prison sentence. Madoff pleaded guilty to 11 counts of felony fraud, including wire fraud, mail fraud, money laundering, and perjury, and his Ponzi scheme was uncovered as one of the largest financial frauds in U.S. history. In addition to his prison sentence, Bernie Madoff was ordered to repay $170 billion in investment funds. The Fed seized and sold Madoff's assets, which included real estate, yachts, and jewelry. Separately, as of September 2021, the Bernie Madoff Victims Fund, directed by Richard Breeden, had recovered and paid out more than $3.7 billion to nearly 40,000 victims. Early in 2020, Madoff told the Washington Post that he was dying of kidney disease and wanted a compassionate release so that he could live the rest of his life free. I'm terminally ill, he told the publication over the phone. There's no cure for my type of disease, so you know, I've served. I've served 11 years already and quite frankly, I've suffered through it. A few months later that year, his request was turned down. On April 14th, 2021, at age 82, Madoff died in prison after spending more than 10 years behind bars without contact with the outside world. It is unclear when or why Madoff initiated his Ponzi scheme. His account manager, Frank DiPascali, who had been with the company since 1975, testified that fraud had been going on for as long as he could recall, despite the fact that he stated in court that it had begun in the early 1990s. The reasons Madoff committed the deception are equally unclear. Although Madoff never gave a clear reason for starting and maintaining his Ponzi scheme for so long, he did admit that he and his family never lacked financial security. Therefore, there was never any reason for him to have pursued this path of deceit. He also often claimed that his employees and others he trusted were also involved in the scam, and that he should not bear the entire guilt. Whatever the case may be, Bernie Madoff is a prime example of modern-day thief who exploited his position and power to steal from the naive, and who was ultimately punished in a manner fitting his offense.